um, and offered money to buy arms, providing that Sinn Féin stopped its agitation, its so, so social agitation in the South, which Sinn Féin refused to do. Um, this ultimately led to uh, the split of 1969-1970, uh, when the IRA split and uh, the provisional IRA was established with the assistance of uh, Fianna, Fianna Fáil people such as Neil Blaney, Charlie Hockey and uh, Kevin Boland and um, they uh, gave them money and guns uh, to set, 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 set up and uh, which then left the official I, IRA and subsequently Sinn Féin split also and in fact the split in Sinn Féin uh, while it grew out of uh, a number of different um, uh, sort of ca causes um, the actual split arose because the uh, Ardesh of Sinn Féin uh, was moving towards uh, ab abandoning the abstentionist policy. The abstentionist po 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 policy, I should explain, um, was one which precluded Sinn Féin from taking seats if elected in, um, in Leinster House, in Westminster or in Stormont. And uh, in that gave rise to uh, what was then known as Provisional Sinn Féin and, of, and uh, the Provisional IRA and Official Sinn Féin and uh, the Official I. I, IRA. So when the split developed, uh, it, it was a case of um, both of us were, if you like, still um, trying to get as much uh, guns or arms as we possibly could and use them against the, the, against the British Army, the, R, the RUC and the B Specials. The, um, but at the same time, where we were trying to um, uh, ease off on the, on the physical force end because we felt all the time that we would have to try and make some kind of um, uh, common cause with Protestant uh, uh, working class people. Uh, the provisionals didn't, didn't think that at all. They were um, escalating their, their situation, their campaign, while we were trying to uh, de-escalate ours. Uh, there was the usual, um, if you like, competition between us and the professionals for arms, which led to other, uh, uh, if you like, more serious uh, um, uh, clashes between us, in which a number of our people and their people lost their lives as a result. Uh, After a while, we were successful in being able to convince a lot of our people who, who, uh, who took some convincing uh, after 69, 1970 and 71, to, tr to um, uh, eventually stop the military campaign, which we did do, and uh, to try and, and switch over to developing uh, the politics and to build a party that would be able to present itself to the public both north and south, to Protestant and Catholic, as a working class, a radical working class party. In the 70s, the movement faced one of its greatest challenges. To prevent itself from being dragged into sectarian conflict and build instead a party of all the Irish working class. Following the uh, provost pro leaving us, uh, we got down much more to uh, development of the party. Uh, what the party was about. Not just the policies of the party, but the organisational work of the party and uh, evolving to the, the principles of democratic centralism in the party, etc. There were still L elements in the party who, who were not uh, entirely satisfied with the development um, of the party and the direction in which we were going. Mm. And Seamus Costo, in fact, uh, led a faction at that time and um, uh, left, uh, well, he himself was expelled and a number of other PP people left and went along with him and he formed the IRSP which subsequently evolved into 
um, the uh, the INLA. One of Costello's main objectives, or uh, aims, as he pointed out, was to for us to amalgamate with the provisionals. This is one of his uh, proposals, and sometime in '73 and early '74. And we had spent years trying to get away from this gang, and that he wanted to have us move back in with them. So he had no understanding of the political ideology and of how the party and the movement had developed. But then this gang turned and uh, they began attacking and killing their members. Uh, and it happened in Belfast and it happened in Dublin, so that uh, nobody was safe from these people. And as you know, we did lose uh, many members and some very valued comrades, all of our valued comrades, in, in that particular uh, struggle. And indeed, I think it's important to point out as well that when we and Republican clubs were continuously calling for peace in Northern Ireland, and indeed uh, we were condemning the paramilitary groups who were involved in terrorism, and, and, and I got to the extent that we were calling for you know, peace and democracy in Northern Ireland and pointing the finger of those who were, um, in actual fact, dividing the working class people more because, you know, the activities of the provost and their, their sectarian killings and uh, indeed the, the fact that they placed their bombs was, was a clear indication that they were directed against the Protestant community. Uh, when we in the Workers' Party, uh, Republican clubs as we were known then, were pointing these facts out to the population in Northern Ireland, it resulted in, in a, 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 the 29th of October 1975 when we had approximately between uh, 60 and 70 gunmen from the Bravais Alliance had attacked members of, of the Republican clubs' homes all within an hour uh, between 6 and 7 p.m. on that particular night. The result of that was that over a, a week or two uh, immediately after that, we had a number of our members uh, shot dead, including the daughter, the, the, the nine-year-old daughter of one of our, our members was shot dead in, in the Belfast area. I think the Belfast membership you know, have had a very difficult time since the split of 69 and 70, and they've had to withstand tremendous pressure and attacks and uh, they're selling their party paper, or engaged in party activity. Uh, I mean, they're not safe. They're walking home. Uh, they're liable to attack at any time from a number, any number of elements. I mean, members have been shot dead by the provisionals, by the British Army, the IUC, the IRSP gang, the uh, Protestant paramilitaries have also killed their members. So uh, we're probably the only party in the country that's been attacked with such a wide. Um, variety of organisations who see us as the enemy. But I think myself that from 1975, when we expelled the ultra-leftist faction, we were then able to, be, to really begin the task of building a socialist party of the working class. Because we had rid ourselves of the right-wing, the opportunist and the ultra-left and we were a stable organisation. The, the late 70s uh, was a, a period of clarifying policies on every uh, issue, uh, social, economic, political issues, Northern Ireland, sectarianism, etc. In 1977, I think it was, the party changed its name from Sinn Féin to Sinn Féin, the work, Workers' Party, as a b clearer expression of the kind of party it was. And in, so subsequently, in 1982, uh, Sinn Féin was dropped and the party became known sim sim simply as the Workers' Party. The Workers' Party has come a long way, from romantic nationalism to socialist politics. It now stands as the party of the Irish working class. In 1981, the party had its first TD elected, followed by two more the following year. It continues to advance both in electoral terms and in its influence throughout society. We have uh, a, 
a very strong united party, north and south. Uh, in fact, the support for the party in the north is only marginally below the support for the party in the south. Uh, some people have an impression that they're, uh, you know, almost totally wiped out in Northern Ireland. They are not. Uh, under tremendously difficult circumstances, of, uh, particularly sectarianism, uh, they have held the ground and they have built the party there which will survive. Uh, so I'm very confident for the whole future, both in Northern Ireland and down here. And through all those years, regardless of the violence, regardless of the attacks on our party and the bitterness, the Workers' Party have actually gone from strength to strength. Not in the extent that it can be seen at the ballot box, but from the point of view of, of our organisation on the ground, from the point of view of the number of young people coming to join the Workers' Party, and even more important, the fact that the Workers' Party in Northern Ireland uh, uh, are able to, to canvas right across the sectarian divide. There has been no other party in the history of this country like the Workers' Party. And I think it is important that in the next five years we develop the party, uh, make it stronger and bigger, so that uh, we're reaching into every home in the country and that we're making every worker conscious of their class and conscious that they have a party to which they can look to for leadership and for uh, to fight their battles.